Hello, my name is Arthur, and in the last video, we got our search function um, working pretty reasonably. And in this video, video we're going to go ahead and start making a little bit of syntax highlighting. So, I'm just going to do syntax for C because this is just a learning experiment. Like this whole project is just a learning experiment for me. So, yeah, I'll just be doing C because um, doing all of the languages, that would be quite the task and would probably be something better suited for using um, a tool like um, Source View, which is um, something that's built to be used in conjunction with the text view for GDK. But that's not what I'm looking to do. So, if we're going to do something like syntax highlighting, we're going to need a, a bunch of text tags. Now, we started off by just adding in a search tag and doing a little check for it inside of the search script. So, that is not going to be the way that we're going to want to go about things if we're going to have a whole bunch of different colors on our text. So what we'd want to do is to make a function to add our tags so that we can see our table laid out right in front of us. So we'd make a function like um, add tags. Now let's pass it the buffer. So we're going to pass it the GDK text buffer. Buffer. So when we add in this function, we need to remember that it, that needs to be added into our H file. So here's our H file. We've added that right at. Um, add tab so we'll put it in the same location so that we have that layout very apparent to us in our H file and then right after we add the table we'll make a call to that function so we'll call add tags we'll pass it book at index page dot buff so we'll pass it the buffer and then we're going to be able to see all of our color tags so up here we won't need a lot of this stuff anymore so we'll cut this out and we'll copy, we'll cut this one out like this so that we can transplant it into here. So we won't need to create the tag here. Um, We'll still be creating our tags in the places that we need them. So, yeah, we make a tag and we look it up in the table. So we don't need to do that part here. We won't need the if statement. And we'll just use this part right here. So we'll bring that back. we could organize this a little bit better so that it reads a little better and that reads a little bit nicer they don't like this so the reason to have our tags laid out in this fashion is because tags have a hierarchy so um, the tag at the bottom of this list that gets added 
last will have um, the highest priority. So in this case, we want our search tag to have the highest priority. Now, because this is a search tag, it would probably be better to use a descriptive name for the tag rather than describing the color. We should um, describe the tag. So we can save that over here. Instead of looking for the green tag, we'll look for the search tag. So that reads a little bit more sensible now. So we can save that. We have our function in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, we're going to start off with when we open a document. So um, we'll do a syntax search for the whole document when we open it. And that would be a good place to start. So to get that started, we're going to want to make another tag. So we'll copy that. We'll paste it right here. This one we'll call single line comment. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll make make the function search for a single line comment. Now a single line comment, this we don't want it to be a background color. We want to change the foreground color. So the color of the text itself rather than making it be highlighted. And we'll need a color for that as well. So we'll open up GIMP and we'll get a color. So we'll get the color picker and yeah, somewhere in this area would be a good color. Coincidentally. Or not so coincidentally. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's our single line comment color. Now what we're going to need is we're going to need an H file and a C file. So the H file, well, the C file, let's um, change that to the language C. And we're just going to save it. So we'll save as we want to go into, um, where are we? I think we're in demo. So we'll save this as syntax dot c so we'll call that syntax dot c this one we'll save as syntax dot h but let's put in the name so we'll call it syntax h here and um, this name um we use a name that reflects the c file because it's more explanatory not because it has any meaning being written this way um, it's just a better explanation of of things and this is just a name though it doesn't in any way go oh you're dealing with this file so in here is where we'll put our functions so we'll save as syntax.h and that saved and then we'll need our functions in here so we'll need to include gdk We'll need to include main.
and in main we'll need to include syntax so we can come back here now for now we're just going to um, start with the two functions one is a void function we'll call init for initialize page inners and then a void function let's spell that right init page inners and then this function will be um we'll just call it highlight page and then how that evolves down the road we can't be sure until we get down the road so the expectation is that this will evolve so gdk um text iter we need start and iter and stop we'll put our two functions into our h file like that and like this and that should be good so let's shut down GIMP get it out of the way so when we initialize the inners what we want is gdk we need an integer for page so page equals current tab the function we made to not have to type out the statement over and over again and really, if a person is sort of jumping in here and doesn't know what this function is, um, yeah, it's, I don't expect this video will actually make much sense because we have functions that were developed through the course of this series of videos. So, initialize the text editors. Um, GDK text buffer get start inner book at index page dot buff comma and start we can copy this we'll get the end editor. The end editor is where we'll put stop. So now we have the start of the page and the end of the page. And then to finish initializing the editors, we want end to equal start. So the end editor is at the start of the page. And we'll also put editor at the start of the page so that gets our that gets our um, iters initialized so we're going to need a gdk text tag we'll call tag the first thing that tag is going to equal in this function and let's get our um, documentation so we can see how to write things 
so like usual we should be starting off with the page number which we pretty much always need so tag equals let's get the edge of this so we can see GDK text tag table look up book page table book page dot table so that's our tag table and the name is single line comment and how did we type that in here let's go down to that yeah let's do this like this because that's a more standard way to do it so that kind of follows along with the way that things are kind of done So now we have um, a tag. We'll need some gbooleans. We'll call them check one. And gboolean check two. In the start, we'll only need one, but if we were to do, um, when it comes to doing a search for a multi-line comment, it finds this is check one, it finds this is check two. So we need more than one check to be able to accomplish the different types of comments. So, because we don't know if this function will get reused or not, at this point, um, we should remove tags. So, we'll gdk text buffer remove tag. And let's access the documentation. Just to see what that looks like, start and end. So we have the buffer, the tag, and start and end. So book at index page dot buff is our buffer. Tag is our tag. Um, in start is our start and in stop is our end now we're doing that because we don't know how we're going to conduct the search when it comes to an already open uh, document so we'll just put that in for measure, but because we're starting just by making it highlight things in a document we just opened, it doesn't have a lot of meaning right now. So I think we have everything in place. Um, actually, what we didn't do here is that won't make sense at all. Um, that will segment, that will get a segmentation fault error. So we need to in initialize the page editors. Then we won't segment here. So while one, an unconditional, well, a loop that we have to break out of. So it's basically um, a loop without conditions. So while one, check one, 
equals GDK text enter forward search. So we'll get the documentation for text enter forward search. We'll begin at the end. So on the first loop, say we're searching for the word void and is at the start of the document. At the end of the search, start is at the beginning of the word, end is at the end of the word. On the second loop, the search will start at the end of the last result, just to explain that. So what we're searching for is single line comments. comma then we'll come down otherwise this sentence is going to get long so our search flags um, GDK text search visible visible only our start and end iters and start so the iters we want to surround the word and end and then our limit which is in stop and stop and this one we can just push out because it just reads better that way. And we can space these kind of like that just to get things to look more orderly. So now we have that. We would go if check one and do the things in there else if there was no search result we break out of the loop so that will break us out of the while loop so if check one if not gdk text enter and let's check our documentation um, ends line so if the text editor does not ends a line so if it's not the end of the line tab gdk text Inner forward to line end and end and if we don't put in end and end in here the statement is nonsense it won't do what it's supposed to do but it also won't it will compile and it won't throw any errors it just won't work And then we add the tag, GDK text buffer apply tag book page buff comma tag comma and start comma and end. And we'll just check on that with um, buffer apply tag. So we have buffer tag start and end. Okay, we'll scan through and look for any obvious mistakes. Hopefully there's no really obvious mistakes here. 
what we're, we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make this function call in main C when we um, open a document. So we have open file. So this is the part where it opens a file. It puts the file into the buffer sets modified to being false so that so that a just loaded script a just loaded document doesn't appear to need to be saved so before we set modified we'll make that function call because i think that adding in the adding in the highlighting will be considered as a modified buffer so we'll want to modify, set the modified of the buffer after we do the highlighting. So everything should be in order, hopefully. So we can save all of these files. And well, it's really, it's going to break down to what does it say when we go to um, compile. So let's look at what we actually need for this statement and modify this statement. Because this no longer has any meaning. This doesn't apply to this project anymore. So we have clipboard.c. We have search.c. And now we have syntax dot c so that's the statement to compile this we'll copy that we'll open in a terminal we'll paste that into the terminal and we'll attempt to compile and see what we get Okay, I know what that is right away. That was a matter of habit. Um, I'm so accustomed at this point in the project to type out buffer in this fashion. Well, we decided to throw ourselves for a loop and pass the buffer for this process. So we have to put that word into here. Because this doesn't know what page is. It hasn't been declared in this. Because I decided to pass it the buffer. So let's see. Um, okay, there's a typo. That's probably in here. Yeah, that's a silly typo. Let's see. These are all stemming from the typo. Here's one GDK iter forward to line end. So there's a typo there. That's on 30. So we have to spell forward right. Forward to line end. More things related to the iter typo. So let's see. Maybe save all <laughs> was worth putting into my documents thing. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to go back and put a save all somewhere. So we'll try to compile that again. All right. So that gets that compiled. We'll run. 
will open up our test document. I've added some extra comments into the text document. And there we go. We have our first little bit of syntax highlighting going on. Now, one place to to check on things is at the end of a document. So we want to know that things work at both start and end of document. So we'll actually save that. Let's close it and we'll reopen it. And things do work at both the start and the end of the document. So in the next video, we'll come back and we'll deal with a multi-line comment. And until then, I hope this video was helpful. Take care.